Hey Fidelity Fortune Hunters, it's Tom Wilmot. Welcome to our series of videos on Active Trader Pro, that's Fidelity's charting platform. It's our goal to try to help you understand the mechanics of how to use this program and leverage it in order to increase your equity curve and have it moving up and to the right. In this video, we're going to drill down on the News and Research tab. It's really important to try to get beyond some of the typical stocks that you could uh, be uh, watching and, and trading day after day. Let's try to find some new opportunities by using the screener tool. If you click here and go to stocks, ETFs, or mutual funds, you'll find that opportunity. So I hope this is of interest. If so, hold on to your hat. We'll get started right after this. Hey friends, welcome aboard as we said. If you are new to this series of videos and you just stumbled in for the first time today, well, welcome to you. The background is very simple. We uh, trade the Forex, but about a year ago we found that there really wasn't much available for Active Trader Pro users, especially those with self-directed IRAs and already those who have a Fidelity account. And so we thought it might be helpful if we just talked about mechanics and how to m navigate around the uh, platform, as well as how to set some option entries and so on and so forth. And in today's video, we are going to talk about the screener tool. If you are uh, welcoming yourself back to our series of videos, we're happy that you're here. We're appreciative of the additional subscriptions that people have been making to our series. And, uh, and we'd like to hope uh, that it will continue to deliver value to you. Uh, we are going to do three shorter videos. I didn't want to jam them all into one. Uh, in addition to this one, which will focus on the screener in the News and Research tab, we're going to come back and do some more work on how to work with your watch lists. That will be a quick review. And then in addition to that, because the market's getting a little toppy, I want to show you how you might be able to use the Fibonacci retracement tool. But as I said, I didn't want to make it into a 30-minute spectacular here, so we'll try to keep each one to about 10 and we'll get at them. So if you want additional information about those things, don't hesitate to subscribe. Hit the, the alarm bell next to the subscription button, and you'll get alerts on upcoming material. Okay, without further ado, let's start. Okay, now many of you who've watched before have heard me ding on the charting software that Fidelity provides. It's uh, not as powerful as other platforms. It's perfectly decent, and there are lots and lots of indicators to use and so forth, but it isn't necessarily the focus of the platform, but that's not the case with news and research. Uh, Fidelity has always been known for not only its execution, but also its news and research, really a strength of the whole Fidelity experience. And today what we're going to focus on are the screening capabilities down here in ETFs. But also there are just a number of different capabilities in the news and research area that you will find helpful to you potentially, Bloomberg TV not being the least of them. And also I'd like to point out that if you get down here into these areas, you can check out some of the various different investment opportunities that you might have. Mutual funds is one of them. They're very strong about that, and their sorting and, uh, and selection tool there is very powerful. It is a different thing from the screener, however, that we're focused on today. Check it out and let us know if you have any questions about that one. The ETFs, interestingly enough, this screener here is how I came up with DDM. DDM happens to be an ultra Dow, and what that means is it moves at multiples of the price uh, movements of the Dow itself in order to give you a little bit different range in price motion and volatility. Uh, if you were to want to know what one it was, you'd be looking at this area here. Now notice if you go back and review settings, if you want to see that for sure and don't want to blank it out, you can move the watermark opacity and then apply, and here it comes. DDM is ProShares Ultra Dow 30. So there you go on that one. Now also, if we were to come back here to News and Research, we'd come down here to Stocks. Let's go to the screener, and let's take a close look at how we use this tool. 
Over here on the left-hand column are all the criteria that you can use. And if you move your slide bar down over here, you have to be a little cautious with it. You can see you can start out with the most popular 15 criteria and then move on down below that and then get into additional capabilities down below all the way through earnings and company values and so forth. You can read them as well as I can. I'm interested in the technicals because one of the things we like to do here with our, uh, with our strategies is use multiple moving averages. And by using the technicals, I can mimic some of that capability. Let me show you how by pulling this up. And now we have here, if we move our slide bar, just basically technicals. I like to use the price off the 20-day moving simple moving average. It's not quite our 24 EMA that we use, the exponential in our charts, but it's close enough for horseshoes and hand grenades, as they say. So if we were to click on that, we'd see that you could come here and you can select very high, high, and so forth. And what I'd like to propose to you in order that we be not too far a, a higher than our moving averages, because that would mean we'd be taking a counter trend trade or we'd be at, you know, buying in at the high of the move. We'd like to maybe select low and see what happens. Now, what happens then is our matches out of that whole universe of securities comes down to 1029. Now, we're not interested in that. And we could move our slide bar down all day before we were able to find anything that would be helpful there. So let's come back up here and let's see if we can come to another area. Let's see what we've got going on here. Why can't we find our criteria? We come back down to this area. Most popular. Let's get to uh, some of the other issues that we have. We're going to pull this one up and we're going to take a look at security price. Now, in this particular case, it's right now without a selection showing a zero to $361,000. That's how come we ended up with 1,018 securities. You can select one of these set kind of uh, uh, ranges, but you can also go here and we could go 80. And let's just plug in a number to 180. Let's just see what happens here. Obviously, you can make it anything you'd like. And in this particular case, then what we'd find is that we have a further selection. We had 1,004 here, and we had in this area 180. Okay, so now what we come down to here is we have with this one 119 of these particular technical indicators, I'm sorry, price indicators take us down from 1,004 to 119 and we could consider uh, consider additional categories let's take a look at security type just as another one and what we'd like are forgetting let's get rid of all the rest of these things and just stick with common stocks and that took another 10 off the list so now what we have is something that we can begin to work with even if it's 109 and the slide bar takes us down a ways now what happens here is as follows we have all of these companies and we can see what the issue here is without any further ado and let's see if we go down through and find any that we like Asbury Automotive Group. Who knows whether this particular one is of any uh, interest to us, but let's take a look by sa saving our symbol in our brain, ABG. And let's come back up to here, ABG, and see how it matches. And notice uh, we have a lot of, uh, we have quite fat bars on the ground. So remember, we click here and let's try to s expand this a bit. And so now we can move our charts around a bit till we get to a point where we'd like to have them. We'll bring this one down as well. We'll get rid of this. And now we have a situation where you can see exactly what we were interested in finding. This was the move that we saw before and then a nice move to the north here. So whether you're an option trader, you're, you're trying to figure out how to have a little swing trade on this stock, here was exactly what we were looking for. This pull back into the bands and a move to the north. Now up in this area, still a little toppy, so I'm not sure we'd want to be doing that. But as we'll talk about in the next video, we're going to be moving over to the watch list so that we can see these stocks and collect them, the ones that are of most interest, to see if we can wait for this kind of a pullback into the bands. 
Okay, folks, let's take a look at two or three more quick things before we wrap up today. We'll go to Tools and Use, and we'll find that we do not have an open screener. So let's go back to News and Research, down to Stocks, add our screener capability. And in this particular case, you'll find out that it's a blank slate. We have no criteria applied so far. If we come to My Screens, we will find the list of screens that we've created in previous videos. Here's my first screener from the last video that we did. Let's click on that and bring it up. And this is where we began with a security price of a medium values. This was the, the common stock. We had a, 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 a particular uh, set of values off the 20-day SMA, and we added some oscillators as well. Let's get rid of the oscillators just for the time being, <clears throat> and let's, in fact, uh, come back to security price and do an edit, and let's put in our, our idea of 80 to 180 just to get back in sync here. And now what we can find is that we come down below this level and we find that we have 93 securities so far, okay? Now, you can, in fact, use this as your baseline, as your baseline stock screener. Now, if we come to this area, save to my screens right here, and we type in Tom's first screener, you can see that it will automatically... Uh, add the, uh, the the screen name that it recognizes so far. Now this doesn't go down off the screen. Let's see. I'll show you what I mean here. If you wanted to resave this, you have a warning that comes up. I've checked this a couple times. I can't drop down in the video low enough for you to see that it gives you an opportunity to say, it doesn't matter, go ahead, resave this. So we'll forget about that for the time being, and we'll just accept that it's ready to rock and roll as my screens, okay? Now what we want to do is come down here, and let's take a look at sector and industry, because this may be a way to further winnow out some of the securities we're not interested in and let's see if anything's happening in the financial area okay hang on one second let's see where we are here we've got to come back up to this area energy materials let's go down consumer staples financials and now we find as we go through this that we have 11 stocks in the financial area that match our criteria and you can in fact go back through and click on any of these and click here to select them memorize the uh, uh the various symbols and put them into your watch list which we will get at the next time okay so bottom line is you can go back now and save this one as a separate name financials save successfully all right and now if we come to my screens we see that we have not only our basic program but we can add to it financials we could go to energy we could go to consumer uh, consumer uh, stocks and so forth and we could save a variety of options here as well so that brings us to the end of our first video here, which is the review in depth of the screener capabilities. Hope that information has been helpful to you. As I said, don't uh, hesitate to subscribe and hit the bell uh, next to it if you'd like alerts so that you'll know when our next uh, material uh, pops up on your YouTube opportunities list. So thanks for watching and have a great day.